Just 39 light years away, we find the fascinating star system 55 Cancri, with a number of interesting planets, but one, 55 Cancri E, that's especially noteworthy. Let's find out more, shall we? I make a new science video each week. If you enjoy them, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell thing to be notified each Friday when my new video hits. As I've already mentioned, the 55 Cancri system lies about 39 light years away, just a short hop in galactic terms. There are two stars, 55 Cancri A, which is a star very similar to our own Sun. It has 96% of the radius and mass and about 60% of the luminosity of our Sun. About a thousand astronomical units away from that star, or roughly 30 times the orbit of Neptune, lies another star called 55 Cancri B. This star only has a quarter of the radius and mass and a mere 0.3% of the luminosity of our Sun. Orbiting the largest star are at least five planets. The outermost orbits just a little further out than Jupiter does in our own solar system and is approximately 3.8 times the mass of Jupiter. We don't know the radius of this planet, but estimates put it at around or slightly smaller than Jupiter. This planet is called 55 Cancri D, but has also been given the proper name of Lippehe. It orbits its sun in a little over 14 years. To find our next planet, called 55 Cancri F, or Harriet as it's been designated, we have to come inwards to within the orbit of the Earth. This planet orbits at around 0.78 astronomical units, or 117 million kilometres from the star. Again, we know the mass of this planet, it's about half that of Saturn, but we don't know its radius. It's likely though to be a gas giant planet. Harriet lies within the habitable zone for this star, meaning that if this planet has any moons, they could have liquid water on their surface. The planet orbits the star in 260 days. Coming further in towards the star, and orbiting at just 36 million kilometres, or about half the distance of Mercury, we find our next planet. Named after Tycho Brahe, this planet also has the designation 55 Cancri C. Slightly more massive than its outer neighbour, but with a mass of about half that of Saturn. Again, this is thought to be another gas giant, maybe a hot Neptune-like planet. Even further in, but not yet at our nearest planet, we find 55 Cancri b, also known as Galileo. This orbits the star at just 17 million kilometres and completes an orbit around its sun in just 14 days. This planet has about 80% the mass of Jupiter and so is also thought to be another gas giant with no solid surface. Finally, we come to our planet of special interest, 55 Cancri e, otherwise known as Janssen. This planet lies just 2.3 million kilometres from the star and whips round it in a time of just 17 and a half hours. This planet has a radius of about 1.9 times that of the Earth and for once we know the mass of it, it's about 7.8 times that of the Earth. Initially it wasn't clear what type of planet Cancri E was, it could have been a hot mini Neptune like planet, a gas giant with no solid surface. Further investigation has suggested it's more likely to be a large, rocky planet, and here's where it gets even more interesting. Analysis of the planet has detected an atmosphere, maybe a little thicker than the atmosphere here on Earth, and also likely to contain chemicals such as nitrogen and oxygen. Dipping down into the planet's atmosphere, we can see however that that's where any similarity with the Earth ends. It's likely, given its proximity to the star, that Cancri E has planet-wide lava oceans pulled by tidal forces and the gravitational pull of the nearby star. This planet would have no land to speak of, just perpetual molten rock as far as the eye can see. Another possibility is that Janssen contains large amounts of carbon, leading to almost a third of the planet being formed from that element. This may mean, due to the extreme temperature and pressures present, that there may be diamonds scattered all over the planet. Volcanic movements may bring these to the surface, and since the melting point of diamond is even higher than this planet has to endure, they may be ejected from volcanic eruptions and lie near the surface, though they will probably sink as diamond has a higher density than lava. 
given the size and mass of the planet, it's likely to have a surface gravity of 2.2 times the gravity here on Earth. To think about how this would feel, imagine giving yourself a piggyback all the time. That's roughly how 2 g-force would feel. Not deadly, but certainly unpleasant. Your heart would have to pump much harder to get blood to your brain. So all in all, not a very nice experience. Even though Janssen is tidally locked, and always has the same face pointing towards the star, the atmosphere effectively moves heat from the sun facing side to the permanently dark side. This means that the day side has temperatures of 2300 degrees celsius or 4200 fahrenheit. There isn't much respite from the heat on the other side of the planet. Even there in the permanent darkness, temperatures reach 1400 degrees C or 2500 fahrenheit. This is an interesting place. Often we find just single planets orbiting stars. That doesn't mean that there aren't any other planets, it just means we can't detect them. Maybe because 55 Cancri is relatively close, we've been able to find a full solar system. Like our own, but very different. As we discover more solar systems, we'll learn more and more about the formation of such places. And that in turn may lead us to learn more about the development of our own solar system. Well, that concludes our trip around a faraway solar system for today. But until next time, thank you for watching.